Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in medicine for study and rapid review. This video is on fetal circulation. The circulation in the fetus differs from that of an adult for one main reason. The lungs are non-functional and the placenta does the job of gas exchange. The liver is partially functional, so neither the lung nor the liver need much blood, versus the placenta, which gets a lot. The umbilical cord from the placenta has two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. Compared to the usual arteries and veins, the umbilical artery has deoxygenated blood and the umbilical vein oxygenated blood. Why does that happen? Because the placenta is the one that's oxygenating blood. So the vein which carries blood from the placenta to the heart will be oxygenated and the arteries which come from the heart to the placenta will bring deoxygenated blood for oxygenation. Now let's look at the circulatory pathway. So fetal circulation is dependent on shunts. There are three bypass shunts, one at the liver, one at the heart, and one at the great vessels. The umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the inferior vena cava. This is 70 to 80% saturated. The blood bypasses hepatic circulation and enters the IVC via the first shunt, that's the ductus venosus. So very little blood enters the hepatic sinusoids. In the IVC, the oxygenated blood from the ductus venosus tends to stay relatively separate from the deoxygenated blood coming from the rest of the lower half of the body and portal circulation. The blood enters the right atrium from the IVC. There's a valve of the IVC called the eustachian valve at the junction with the right atrium, and that directs the more oxygenated blood towards the second shunt, the foramen ovale. This is an opening in the atrial septum so that blood can reach the left atrium. The rest of the deoxygenated blood coming from the head end of the fetus through the superior vena cava and from the lower half of the body and portal circulation through the IVC, they go through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, blood enters the pulmonary artery. The better oxygenated blood from the left atrium, whose saturation now would be around 65%, enters the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, the blood enters the aorta. Majority of the oxygenated left ventricular blood goes to the brain and coronary circulation, so the vital structures are getting good oxygen. Distal to the origin of the left subclavian artery is shunt 3, the ductus arteriosus. It's a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So blood from the pulmonary artery goes through the ductus arteriosus to the aorta. Thanks to this shunt, only around 12% of blood that comes out of the right ventricle reaches the lungs. The rest goes through the ductus arteriosus to the aorta. From the aorta, blood gets supplied to the rest of the systems. It passes through the umbilical arteries back to the placenta for oxygenation. So in both these shunts, blood moves from the right side to the left side. Why does that happen? So the fetal lungs are collapsed. The alveoli are closed and the pulmonary vessels are collapsed. If the vessels are closed, the resistance to blood flow is high. That's the pulmonary vascular resistance. So that's high, and thus the pulmonary arterial pressure is high, as is the right atrial and the right ventricular pressure. The placenta, on the other hand, has large vessels. So the vascular resistance in systemic circulation is low. Because of the low systemic vascular resistance, there's a low aortic pressure, a low left atrial and left ventricular pressure. So since the right atrial pressure is higher than the left atrium, blood flows through the foramen ovale from the right atrium to the left. Similarly, the pulmonary arterial pressure is higher than the aortic, so blood flows from the pulmonary artery to the aorta, so right to left shunts, and thus they bypass the lungs. So blood gets immediately recirculated through systemic arteries without the lungs. So what happens at birth? The baby takes a breath and the lungs expand. The vessels are no longer compressed, so the resistance to flow is lesser. So the pulmonary vascular resistance will fall. During fetal life, there's some amount of hypoxia. That keeps the pulmonary vessels constricted. 
But once there's aeration, there's vasodilation. So that also reduces the pulmonary vascular resistance. That in turn causes a reduction of the pulmonary artery pressure, the right atrial and the right ventricular pressure. Loss of blood flow to the placenta makes the systemic vascular resistance rise. So high aortic pressure, left atrial pressure, and left ventricular pressure. So now the pressure of the left circulation is higher than the right. With the left atrial pressure being higher than the right atrium, blood will flow backwards through the foramen ovale. There's a flap towards the left side of the atrial septum. That'll close backwards. So the shunt closes and there's no more flow. In most people, it'll close permanently. If it doesn't, it's called a patent foramen ovale. But because in general the left atrial pressure is going to stay higher than the right, the flap stays closed, and most of the times it goes unnoticed. High aortic pressure and low pulmonary artery pressure means blood flows backwards through the ductus arteriosus as well. In a few hours, the muscles in the wall will constrict, more so over the next one to eight days. The flow stops, and this is a functional closure. Over the next one to four months, once fibrous tissue grows into the lumen, that's when it anatomically closes. So what makes the ductus close? There are two possible reasons. One is high oxygen tension. The partial pressure of oxygen increases from 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury during fetal life to 100 millimeters of mercury once breathing starts. Also, there's a loss of prostaglandin E2, and that has vessel relaxing effects. So PGE2 keeps the ductus open. If the ductus remains open, it's called a patent ductus arteriosus. However, contrary to fetal life, the shunt here is a left-to-right shunt from the aorta to the pulmonary artery because of the pressure changes. The last shunt, the ductus venosus, flow through the umbilical vein stops. The portal blood goes into the ductus venosus. A small amount goes through the hepatic channels. In around one to two hours, the muscles in the wall of the ductus venosus contract and it closes. So a rise in the portal venous pressure pushes the portal venous blood into the hepatic sinusoids. A patent ductus venosus is quite rare. In adults, these structures, they remain as vestiges. The umbilical arteries become the medial umbilical ligament, not to be confused with the median umbilical ligament, which is a remnant of the arachis. The umbilical veins become ligamentum teres of the liver. The others are pretty easy. The ductus venosus becomes the ligamentum venosum, the ductus arteriosus becomes the ligamentum arteriosum, and the foramen ovale, it remains as the fossa ovalis. So that's the fetal circulation and the changes that happen at birth. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So I'll see you in the next one.